Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is Uday Pandit and you are watching MEP Technical World. In this video, we will discuss about basically how to do power wiring and control wiring of reverse forward starter of the three phase induction motor. Okay, so in previous video, we have already discussed about basically how to read and draw the reverse forward starter power wiring and control wiring. Okay, so in this video, according to that drawing, we will do the physical wiring okay so before we start the session i would like to request you if you are not a subscribe my channel please subscribe my channel and also hit the bell icon so you'll get notification regarding my upcoming videos so let's get started so first we'll do power wiring then we'll move to the control wiring. okay so for power wiring basically we need a main incomer breaker so this is main incomer breaker four pole and uh, this is the breaker or we can say also so this is the starter breaker and here we have a two contactor one for forward and another for reverse word contactor okay so this is for forward direction and this is for reverse word direction okay and here we have a overload relay thermal overload relay for motor protection okay in case of overload or short circuit okay and this is the tv terminal block and finally we have a one three phase induction motor okay so so these are the components for power wiring okay so and for three phase power monitoring purpose these are the mcb for separate indicator okay ryb indicator so this is for monitoring purpose if these all all three uh, indicator are glowing it means our three phase all three phase are present if one of them are not glowing it means one phase among them it is missing okay so to monitor the uh, our three phase power these are indicator switch help us okay now let's start the wiring okay so first let's take a three phase neutral power okay so these are the r y b and neutral so so this is the three phase power source okay and from the output of this main incomer mcb let's connect it to main bus bar these are the bus bar r y b bus bar okay now from here let's take a red wire which is which is connected at tp mcb input of this mcb and y and b similarly okay now from the output of this mcb we can connect it to the input of the this forward contactor so this is basically l1 l2 and l3 okay now from the output of it we'll connect to we'll connect to the olr overload relay thermal overload relay or we can insert it, this pin into this output terminal of this forward contactor at t1 t2 and t3 okay and from the output of this olr finally we connect it to the all three phase ryb at tv now from the output of this tv finally connected it to our motor terminal box okay so this is for forward direction okay now come to reverse how we can reverse the direction of the three phase induction motor as you know that if we interchange the phase between any of two at that time what happened direction of motor is changed okay so simply when we are going to reverse the direction of three phase three phase induction motor what we have to do just interchange the two phase just interchange the phase between each other okay between two phase okay so like we can see over here so let's take a wire red wire from here okay and this is the red for uh, this is the red phase okay and connect it to the l1 terminal of this reverse contactor okay similarly and from the output of it it is connected to the red phase of this contactor output of this contactor okay so here we have not changed anything this is similar now here we are going to interchange the phase between blue and red so from blue we are going to connect it to the output of this yellow so here we have interchanged this yellow this yellow with blue okay now from yellow it is connected it to blue so if this contactor got pick up when we want to start the motor in reverse then so actually what is the function of this reverse contactor it reverse the phase between y and blue okay so this is the way we can reverse the direction of or change the direction of the three phase induction motor okay so up to here we have uh, completed power wiring now come to indicator wiring okay so these three indicators are for phase monitoring purpose so this is for r red indicator this is for y phase and this is for blue phase okay so let's wire it so r from let's take a r for r from here and connect it to the 
connect it through this uh, MCB and let's give it to neutral at another terminal of this indicator in similar way we can give yellow okay blue okay so in this way we can complete the power wiring now come to control wiring so in control wiring basically we need a 220 volt okay so here we have a one phase and one neutral so between them we have a 220 volt AC supply okay so uh, here we are going to only use its contact okay NONC contact of this contactor and OLR and also A1 and A2 tool terminal which is coil supply terminal of this contactor okay so this is OLR and this is forward contactor and this is reverse contactor and this is the control MC here this is the emergency push button so this is for uh, to stop the motor in case emergency and this is for stop the motor and this is for forward push button so this is no push button and this is reverse what push button this is also no push button okay and these are the indicators to mon to monitor the status of the motor whether it is running in forward or reverse word or it is in trip condition in case of any fault okay now let's start the wiring control wiring from here let's take a phase wire okay so first we will complete the phase wire then we will move to neutral wiring okay so let's take a phase wire and connect it to the input terminal of this control mcb and from the output terminal of this control mcb it is connected to the input terminal of this emergency push button and from the output terminal of this emergency push button it is connected to the NC contact of this OLR thermal overload relay. So this is NC 95 and 96 number is NC contact. So so here we connect it to 96 and from the 95 let's take a wire and finally connect it to the input of this NC push button which is used for stop the motor. Now from the output of this connect it to the NO push button which is forward which is to start the motor in forward direction. Okay. Now from this output of this NO push button it is connected to the NC contact of this reverse contactor. Here we are going to implement the interlocking circuit between these two contact forward and reverse word contactor. So at a time only one contactor will be pick up. Okay. That's why. So now from the output of its NC contact finally it is given to the forward contactor coil supply terminal which is A1 term okay now this forward contactor got A1 terminal through this emergency push button NC push button and NO push button which is for uh, forward direction to start the motor in forward direction okay now this uh, contactor also need neutral supply so from here let's take a neutral wire and uh, let's give it to A2 term so up to here we have given phase wire to phase and neutral to this forward contactor okay so here we have not yet implemented holding circuit okay so to permanent hold the to permanent run the uh, motor in forward direction what we have to do we have to implement the holding circuit okay so for that let's take a wire from the input of this push button and connect it to the anode terminal of this contactor and from the output of it it is given to a1 term so so this will hold the contactor so here we have implemented latching or we can say holding circuit in similar way we can do also for reverse direct okay? so this push button is used to start the motor in reverse direction so for this let's take a phase wire from here and connect it to the input terminal of this reverse push button and from the output of it it is connected to the NC contact of this forward contactor. So here we are implementing interlocking circuit. That's why we use this forward contactor. Okay, before giving to this A1 terminal, and from the output of this NC contact, it is given to A1 terminal. Okay, and uh, it also need neutral supply. So from here we have connected it A2 terminal. And uh, now here let's implement the latching circuit, or you can say holding circuit for this uh, reverse contactor to run the motor in reverse direction so for that let's take a wire from input of this push button and it is connected to the anode terminal of this contactor and from output of this anode it is given to a1 term so up to here we have uh, completed the wiring for forward controlling and reverse word controlling okay now come to this indicator wiring okay so this green one is for forward direction if our motor is running in forward direction at that time this indicator will be glowing okay 
if this is glowing it means our motor is running at reverse direction if this red one is glowing it means our motor is in trip condition okay so first let's complete it for forward direction indicator so for that what we have to do so here from the output of anode contact let's take a wire and give it to forward this indicator this is for forward indication okay and give it to the neutral at another term of this indicator okay similarly for reverse contactor so from the output of this it will given to this reverse indicator and neutral from here similarly for trip we are going to use the no contact of this olr condition uh, no contact of this overload relay so in case of any fault overload fault or short circuit fault this will trip the circuit it means this no contact become nc at the fault condition okay that's why we use no contact so here we have already power available from here we can loop and connect it to the 98 number terminal and from 97 let's take a wire and give it to the red indicator and from here can give neutral okay so basically these are these three indicator for monitoring purpose whether our motor is running in uh, forward direction reverse forward direction or it is in trip condition okay if we start the motor in forward direction it means uh, this anode becomes nc and uh, through this power will reach to here and this uh, during that time this indicator will be glowing okay similarly for reverse contact if we start this it means this become anode become nc and at that time this will be glow similarly in case of any fault overload or short circuit fault what happen this will trip and this will cut the main control phase wire means main phase supply so this will stop the whole system so this will stop the motor and this anode contact become a nc and at that time this will be glow so this will tell us our motor is in trip condition okay so basically how it works when we uh, start this when we push it it means we start the motor in forward direction so this contactor will get pick up and its contact anode contact become nc and nc contact become anode okay so at this time this con this indicator will be glowing and at the same time if we push this one reverse push button this will not pick up because we have implemented interlocking circuit for safety purpose okay similarly if we press this one this contactor will be pick up so before press this we have to stop the motor okay after that then we have to press this button so this is for reverse direction it means this contactor will be pick up and our motor will be running in reverse direction at the same time this anode become nc and reverse indicator will be glow okay so with the help of this indicator we can monitor motor is running in reverse direction okay and this is for trip in case our motor is at overloaded condition or short circuit condition so this will trip the this will stop the motor okay whole system actually how so a trip condition this nc contact become a no it means it breaks the power supply over here if this break it means our contactor get de-energized so this will stop the power feeding to the motor okay and this becomes no becomes nc so at that time this indicator will get power and it will glow so if, if it is glowing it means our motor is in trip condition so hope you guys understand about how to do power wiring and control wiring of the reverse forward starter time okay so here we have a some application of reverse forward motor starter so we can uh, use it in EOT crane so here we can up and down means uh, we have used reverse and forward and slightly left and right so here also it is used so here this is also used uh, reverse forward logics okay and this is the punching machine and here we have a elevator so here so in this elevator also used reverse forward logics for up direction and down direction okay and this is the track so here we can also forward and reverse forward so this is also a conveyor belt in this also we can use this one a reverse forward starter principle okay so these are the application of the reverse forward starter so hope you guys understand about reverse forward starter wiring panel wiring okay so thank you for watching this video please like share comments and subscribe and also hit the bell icon so you'll get the notification regarding my upcoming videos so thank you very much see you again in next video